card last year. March 8th through 10th, NASCAR returns to Las Vegas. Call 644-4444 or visit LVMS.com today for your weekend package. It's official, Las Vegas. Get up to $2,500 in minutes without a checking account or collateral at one of our 25 area locations. Broke.com from your home, office, or mobile phone and easily find a location or even get your entire loan funded online. Fast approval, small affordable payments, no application fee, and bad credit or past bankruptcy are no problem at Dollar Loan Center. Check this out. If you borrow $500 for one week, then pay it off, it'll only cost you $18.95 in interest. How cool is that? Heck, it's only $13.53 per day in interest if you need $2,500. Don't be fooled by our competition. Call them first. Then log on to don'tbebroke.com or call 364-LOAN today. EPI is 197.06%. Get additional cost information toll-free at 866-550-4352. Call 364-LOAN today. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape, Shape, learn boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, grappling, jiu-jitsu. Oh, and I almost forgot, they have great kid classes as well. Extreme Couture is the place for you. No matter what skill level you're at, trust me, I know. It helped me get my butt right back into shape. Call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today. Call 702-616-1022. That number again is 702-616-1022. You'll be glad you did. I know I was. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685 4100. That's 685 4100. Quinn Rampage Jack. Drops him. This is Frankie the Answer, Edgar. Hey, this is Rashad Evans, and you listen to MMA Fight Corner. And here we go. This is a championship fight. This is MMA Fight Corner, live on Fox Sports Radio from Las Vegas, with your hosts, Billy Mira, Phil Divide, and Joey Varner. Hey, this is Mike Goldberg, voice of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, and you are listening to the MMA Fight Corner. Here we go! Here we go! go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back inside the MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. I am Billy Mira here with Phil Devine and Joey Vonner. And tonight, we have a pretty cool show for you. Joining us on the line will be Yuri Villafort and Liz Carmooch, both who are fighters on this weekend's UFC historic 157 fight card. Uh, Yuri fights on the first cu- fight on this card on Facebook. And, of course, Liz Carmooch taking on bantamweight champion Ronda Rousey. So stick around. Should be a great time. And before we get into this fight card happening this Saturday night and get ready for Yuri to join us in a little bit, I want everyone's reaction on last weekend's UFC on Fuel 7 card, which I thought was an awesome day of fights, man. No, I mean, uh, my reaction, uh, there's there's nothing surprising about that because, once again, you know, on the main card, I went perfect with my predictions. Flawless. Uh, once again. Yeah, how did we, how did, I didn't know if I checked all my, all my picks. Everything went solid. Undercard, though. 
That's a completely different story for me. Uh-huh. I only got I only got one fight on the undercard I picked correctly, which you know. I, I'll be honest. A, a lot of decisions in this card, a f- fight card. I think only two fights were finished, um, you know, and the card itself were good. The fights were good, but I think there was one big problem with the entire fight card, which is a, a universal thing we're seeing now: the judging. Oh, was judging was absolutely horrible. Absolutely atrocious this weekend. They're, like my brain still hurts from the Tahuna uh, fight. I mean, no, no, the decision was right, but the, the fact that there was, was a 30-27 right, round was ridiculous. Not that. There was in there. I believe there was oh, a 30, 29 26. 26. Yeah, that means they gave a 10-8 for two and for one round. That's right. And they didn't give a 10-round a, a not round for, um, what, why is his name? Jimmo. Me? Yeah, Ryan Jimmo in the first. At first. Snap into a Jimmo. Like, it was <laughs> insane. And, I mean, and then the scoring of giving Shea, someone actually giving Shea Mills the fight against Riddle. Yeah, that was ridiculous. And that goes all the way down to the undercard. The Von Lee fight yes. versus Takuza. I, okay. I thought Takuza won that fight. And I, we were texting back and forth, and I said, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I picked Von Lee because I think he lost, but I know the judges are going to give it to him. Yeah. And I was joking when I said that, but I was right. It's funny. When I, when I was actually looking at the card and breaking everything down and that one fight, because they're so evenly matched, such both gr- great grapplers, the one thing that was, you know, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, you know, uh, Lee's got is kind of got the disadvantage in all factors in this fight when it comes to the grappling, but the one thing that he has in his favor is he's fighting in London. It's in his backyard. So, and, and I I don't know why I actually picked against him, but atrocious job with the judging. From what I understand, Mark Ratner, you know, is now looking into things, uh, which you know I'd like to I would like to see something done about this because you know we've talked about it before. You should be held accountable for your job. Is there a city hall of MMA? We're crying out loud. <laughs> yeah, there needs to be. You know what? There needs to be. Well, it's the athletic commission that, that 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 provides the judges, and there's no repercussions. There's no, you know, there's no one. They don't have to be held accountable. You know, they do a horrible job, and they don't lose their job. You know, how many times has Adelaide Bird given the worst score you've ever heard in your life, and she's back again for the next card? It's like, dude, if if I came in here and told pronounced every single fighter's name wrong, and and was off on every single thing. I started talking about how um, you know James Tahuna was the greatest grappler in the world. You know, saying everything wrong, I would be fired. I wouldn't have a job. If you go to McDonald's and you order a, a, a side of French fries and the guy hands you McNuggets and every time someone orders fries, he gives him McNuggets, he'd get fired. You know, when you don't do your job, you get fired. By the way. I don't go to McDonald's, just so you know. I don't eat fast food, but I, that was the only analogy that popped in You just in eat my... food fast, that's yeah, all. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> well, any, what were the, some of the biggest surprises on this fight card, as far as you guys were concerned? Actually, honestly, the biggest surprise, uh, Terry Adam uh, Hene Forchi. Yes, absolutely. A- oh, dude. Dominated. Uh, what, what is it? Now, was this a case of Terry Adam being out too long, not being able to implement anything, or was it the fact that you know, he was just gun shy after getting knocked out. Boom. I think that's what it is. And I think that being gun shy, it showed because anytime Forchi started letting those punches go, I mean, he really cowered. He flinched. He, he was visibly uncomfortable to watch. And that set up the takedowns of Forchi. And then Adam just couldn't get off. He didn't do anything. He, he looked like he was still, he was having Barboza flashbacks. Yeah, not something. Not, I'm sure he has those flashbacks every night before he goes to sleep. Him and Adam Sella, huh? Adam, Adam Sella has the, the uh, Uriah Hall <laughs> flashbacks. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's still feeling that shot. Oh, man. man. Those spinning hook kicks are no joke. Whose spinning hook kick was better? Terry Adams or, or Uriah Hall's? You know, I think just because of the devastating, um, and probably only because it was done on tough, I'm going to go with Uriah Hall because of the fact that you heard the re- you heard the breathing you heard him laying there you saw the silence in the gym that in Brazil that place was going nuts so it wasn't like right. you know i think that's why it's more devastating but it was definitely a better fall terry edem fell like a tree I th- I think if if we had a microphone on each one of the fighters and, and it was the same scenario, I think Adam was out just as bad as Sella. I mean, he was he was doing the uh, stiff the, arms, the Matua dance. I call it the Matua dance. John, where John Matua, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, when take Abbott Matua in him, but uh, um, I, I got to go with the Barboza one only because it happened first. It was the first one we saw. It was on such a big spotlight, you know. It was just so. 
perfectly executed, you know, just like the front snap kick, you know. I, and uh, Machida's was a little more flashier. He kind of did a, the karate kid, you know, crane kick, you know, f- bring the left up and jump with the right. But Anderson still it, sticks out first. Yeah, it was done first. No one had ever seen it before. So I think that just stands out more in my head. But both just all four of those amazing, devastating knockouts. And, and they, they be- by uh, Hen and Burrell this week, there was a beautiful spinning back kick that landed right to there. To the face. To the face, you know. It, Props to McDonald's, you know, listen, going four rounds with Burrell, it was, I didn't think that was going to happen. I thought it was going to be a little bit, uh, you know, I thought that fight was going to end sooner. But um, I, I have to be honest, impressive, you know, he, he, he rocked Burrell for a little bit, had him on, on, Bob, on Bambi legs for a little bit, as you like to say. Right. So it was, uh, you know, props to him. But like we said on the, the other day, a little too, too much too soon for him. That's what I said, yeah, just too much too soon. But yeah, I look for big things out of him. He'll be back, and, and McDonald's just, he's slick, man, just a little too young. Also, though, uh, I'll tell you what, Cub Swanson, you know, there was a couple moments where he looked like he was going to brain fart. He kind of coasted, but, but he, he wrote it out. Uh, I was definitely impressed with him. And, and, and let me ask you, Phil, do you think that Cub looked that great? Or he looked pretty good, and Dustin just didn't look like he's looked flat since his loss. Um, I don't know. It's tough to say because I mean, when you, I, I've never seen a ranking system actually done so well with those two having those guys five and six, or it was six and seven. Right. You know, those two that they're so evenly matched. It was, and it was the fight we expected it to be. It, it was a great fight. Yeah. I love it. Sounds good. Now, we have a little bit of a surprise on the phone right now. We were going to supposed to have this interview at 630, but joining us on the line right now is Liz Carmooch, who is fighting Ronda Rousey at UFC 157 this weekend. Liz, you there? I am here. Uh, Liz, thanks so much for joining us here on Inside the MMA Fight Corner. Uh, yes, for, thank you. First things first, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, uh, happy birthday! Wow, I didn't we know got that. you. We got you something, but since you're 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 not here, we can't give it to you. Sorry. <laughs> we got you a big cake too, but we know you can't eat it, so we're just gonna eat it ourselves. You know what? I, if you send me pictures of you eating it, I'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta go get a cake. Yeah, but you don't you call my bluff. <laughs> don't say that, Liz, because Joey loves to send out pictures all over the internet of himself. <laughs> don't don't get him going, hon. <laughs> I guess the first thing I'd love to ask you is that, that you've probably heard this a million, million times leading up to this fight, but how prepared are you going in this fight against Ronda Rousey to defend against that arm bar? You know, not prepared at all. I figured that I would just go in there, uh, just kind of wing it, hope to not get guessed out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm preparing for this fight just like I do every other fight. I'm not really uh, treating it that much different than any other one. I... I, I train all year round, so it's really just cha- changing the face of the opponent is really the only thing that changes for me. Right. Now, I know that you were in the Marines, military. How much has that mindset of being in the military helped you uh, get ready for this fight this Saturday? Uh, I think it's helped a lot. Uh, there's nothing that I can ever experience again in life that compared to being in combat and going through Iraq and going through boot camp and knowing that nobody can ever break me down. And if I survive through that mentally – and physically, then I know I can survive anything in life. Now, I, just for everybody listening, you were an electrician on helicopters? I was. That, that's amazing. That, I mean, very impressive. Very impressive. So you're a very focused person, I take it, Liz. Uh, focused in an ADD style. <laughs> okay. You sound <laughs> so like me. me. As long as you give me ten things to do at once, I can do everything. But if you give me one thing, uh, it's probably not going to get done because there's just something else that's shiny distracting me. That's what geniuses are made of. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you got to be the first, you know, MMA fighter ever. You know, a couple months ago, you're scheduled to face Sarah McMahon, a, a former Olympian, and now you got Ronda Rousey, a former Olympian. I mean, that's got to be a, a stressful couple of months leading up to this, knowing the type of caliber opponent you're going in there with. No, not at all. I mean, if anything, it's just an honor um, to to be able to be considered to be an athlete on the same caliber as Olympians. Uh, that to me is just it's amazing, but I know that um, I'm a strong-willed and very dedicated individual, and I know that that's going to pay off in this fight. Now, uh, last week we had Danny Castillo on the show, and he was uh, this past weekend he fought a, a, a fighter in Paul Sass who is known for one real particular move, and that's a triangle choke. And uh, he was talking to us, and not so much preparing, and you know, for submission defense. It was more along the lines of submission awareness. And 
kind of being pre-focused with that. Have you gone about that the same way? Exactly. Um, it's the only thing I'm preparing for in this fight is being on the defensive. Then it doesn't give me an opportunity to implement my own game plan. You have to both prepare for a defensive action and having your awareness for certain submissions, as well as being able to implement your own game plan and being on the offensive. Now, a lot of women turned down this fight beforehand. Uh, I, I know there, you know, a few people were called and and they said uh, they said no. Do you know? Do you remember or have you heard where on the list you were to to take this fight? No, I didn't know at all. I hadn't even known until after I got the fight that anyone else had turned it down. Now, how long have you did you know about this fight? Because I had been hearing rumors months before it was actually signed that you were going to be the one to face her. Is that true, or did it come out when it came out to the media? Um, if, if it's if that was the case, then it was a surprise to me because <laughs> I didn't hear about it until a few hours before everyone else. Really? Because Joey, I remember when we were talking, we were about, talking it, about it, and I was like, "Liz is getting that fight," and you know, I, I was actually I was a little excited. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, li hey, Liz, I gotta tell you, man, you just seem so comfortable here in the spotlight. You know, this is probably this is the biggest fight of your career, one of the biggest fights in the history of uh, of the sport. And just speaking to you and everything I've seen of you, you seem so relaxed, so at ease. H how are you handling this? How are you dealing with this this, this situation? I'm just taking it in the stride. I'm not letting um, really the, the state of what's about to, about to occur take over me. I think if I focus too much on it being a, such a marker in history, I think I would let it overwhelm me. I'm just grateful to, for the experience because I never thought that I would be in the position I am today. I dreamt about it, but I never thought it would become a reality. So uh, it's too mind-blowing. I think that my, my brain just can't wrap itself around the whole idea. Well, what do you? Th how do you think this is affecting Ronda? Because I... Just today, I was reading an article with, I believe it was the Daily News or the New York Post. And towards the end of the article, after the whole write-up, the most interesting quote was, although she was rude and abrasive and did not apologize at all, Miss Rousey is clearly an athlete. You know, and it was like, she. it seems like this is getting to her, and she's getting a little agitated with all of this. Do you, have you seen that in any of your interactions with her? No, I, I haven't personally seen it, but I know that um, you're not going to give your opponent the satisfaction of seeing that. You don't want to want them to see any weakness. So even if it is there, I doubt that you would let me let me see that in person. <laughs> Do you know? You know, it's funny. We talk about the pressure of Liz going into this fight, and of course, naturally facing you know Ronda Rousey, who's now become almost a legend because of her armbar and all that. But think about the pressure that Ronda's under. This is still her first fight in the UFC. And it's very important that she comes away with a with a victory as well because of all the hype that's been behind her. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I really feel like there's more pressure on her. I'm coming in as the underdog. Nobody expects for me to stand a chance. The pressure is on her to follow through with everything that she's done so far and to stick with her game plan and implement her game plan. So for me, anything I do uh, is just amazing, and it's beyond what anybody expected. Liz, of what we've seen of Rhonda, she seemed not virtually uh, indestructible, but just untouchable. She's kind of dominated every aspect of the fight. Uh, we got to see the, the most of her in the Misha Tate fight where she did look uncomfortable. I don't want to say uneasy, but just not comfortable getting hit yet. But aside from that, I mean, she's really dominated everyone that she's faced. Um, what's the secret to beating Rhonda Rousey? Uh, the secret waits to be... Uh released on until this Saturday. Nice. <laughs> oh, she got I you, Joey. Yeah. She got you. <laughs> so you're not going to tell us the game plan, huh? No, not at all. <laughs> Have you been watching uh, yourself on primetime? You know, I wasn't going to, and then my girlfriend keeps tricking me. She's like, hey, I have this YouTube video I want you to check out. <laughs> and she drops it on my stomach. I'm like, really? I was trying to go to sleep, but I guess I'm going to watch this instead. So, yeah, I, I've now seen myself on prime time. <laughs> so what, do, what are your thoughts on it and the coverage that, that's been uh, shown? I think it's amazing to be able to, uh, you know, I never thought that I would be the famous person or see myself on television be an episode. So, uh, to me, it's really just kind of shocking. And it's great to see my dog becoming famous and getting the light. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Oh, I, I got to tell you, you know, I'm I'm very excited about this fight, but and, and I I think it's rightfully so that you know first women's title fight in the UFC should headline the card, 
There have been some media members out there that were making comments about the fact that Dan Henderson and Leota Machida, you know, a legend and a possible legend, they're being the co-main event and kind of being cited. Do you agree? Do you, how do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I completely understand why, why people have skepticism about it and why they're rooting for them to have that main position. In my mind, those were two um, historians for the sport of MMA in the UFC. I, I respect and I look up to both Machida and to Henderson. They're some of my favorite fighters. And it was a surprise to me when I found out that we'd be headlining over them. I certainly thought that it would be them. But I'm not going to take away the opportunity and um, not say that I'm going to take it. You know, if, if I'm given something, I'm going to run with it. So I'm grateful to the UFC for letting me be in that position. But I'm certainly not going to take away from the athleticism that they both represent in, in their fight. Liz, uh, I think right now I believe the line is you're an 8-1 to one underdog. Um, do you feel like the press and the media and the odds makers are overlooking you? Well, that's an improvement. It was 12-1, to one, so it, it needs to kind of <laughs> come more in my favor. That uh, means... No, you know, I, I'm okay with, with people seeing me as an underdog, and I'm okay with people underrating me because it gives me that much more of an opportunity to just blow everybody mind, everybody's mind to come out with a bang. Hey, that just goes to show you, if you started out at 12 and now you're 8, that means money's going your way. Money's moving. Money's moving <laughs> towards your side, so that's a good sign. <laughs> Stars are aligned. It's your birthday week. We've seen a lot of a lot of this. Joey, you mentioned it last week on the show. You know, guys like Alistair, Rashad, people that are talking about how they're going to be next in, t- in line. They didn't. Look, they looked past their opponents, and look what happened. So you know, you were talking about it last week. The stars may be aligned for you know this fight Saturday night. Do you, Do you think Ronda's overlooking you? No, I, I don't think she is. I think she's certainly um, looking towards the future and the possibilities, but I don't think she's overlooking me as a fighter. She herself has said that that would be a mistake if she did so. Yeah, I, I would consider this to be the most important fight for both fighters, probably yeah. of their career really, so far. Really looking forward and I, to And it. i got to give the UFC props for actually making this a headline event because it is historic, number one, and it's a great way to introduce the women's division uh, to the UFC. So, But, you know, we've asked you what you thought about your fight. Uh, do you have any opinions on some of the other fights on this fight card that you'd like to share with us? Um, other than excitement, I'm not going to do picks because I, I respect all these men way too much to do that. Um, but I'm really looking forward to seeing their fights because uh, the UFC always puts on a great show, and I'm with so many athletes that I've just respected so much and, and looked up to that it's going to be great to, to be on a fight card with them. Yeah, yeah. that's got to be great to be on a fight card that you're headlining with other people that you respect so much that you've watched probably over the past 10 years. I mean, some of these It guys. is. It really is. Wow. Yeah. I got to tell you, this is this is going to be exciting. You know, Are you one of the people who, who backstage when you're warming up, do you watch the fights that are going on? Um, yeah. Uh, I haven't been in a lot of positions, honestly, uh, where I've actually had cameras or uh, televisions backstage. <laughs> Usually, one of my fights, I was in a stall, a bathroom stall. Oh. Um, and another one, I was in kind of like um, a back room, with, and it was a tournament, so it's tons of other people. So I haven't really been in a position to watch other fights. <laughs> And then usually all of us are goofing around backstage just having a good time uh, before we step out there that we don't necessarily have an opportunity to do so. Wow. Does that, does that do anything psychologically knowing that you're walking in? Because you, I know a lot of fighters have routines, fight day routines, the way they go through things. You're on a completely different stage now and on another level. Uh, do you have any fear that like day, fight day is going to be completely different than you're used to? No, I think um, – if anything, the fight that I had with Marlos Conan was probably the most similar that I can use to make this as, as a gauge in comparison. And in a lot of ways, it's very similar. And I think that all the media that I've been doing and, and having the experience with prime time has helped me prepare for this night. Excellent. What about the octagon jitters, the famous, the infamous octagon jitters? Uh, how do you plan on dealing with those? Because you, you hear Joe Rogan and Mike Goldberg always talking about how huge they are. And, and this is, you know, not just your first time fighting in the UFC, but you're the main event. I mean, all, all eyes are on you. What do you do to get yourself prepared for that moment? I don't let it overwhelm me. Um, I see it in perspective, and I, I realize that it's there. But it's just like any other fight. I've been in the position where I was a co-main event. I've I headlined with Marlowe's and Dan Henderson before, so it's not like it's really, in my mind, that different. It's just a different place in a different cage. That's so cool. And yeah. up until the end, you were dominating that Marlowe's fight. <laughs> yeah. 
Guys, you're talking to a girl who fixed helicopters. Come on. In the military. <laughs> Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. Come on, Liz. Let's do this. Come on. Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, Liz, listen, uh, we wish you all the best on this fight coming up this Saturday night. We're all looking forward to it. I'm sure you're going to do great. Go in there and put on a great show. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back here when you come to Vegas. We'll have you on the MMA Fight Corner in person. That sounds great. All right. Take care. Good Get luck. that belt. Thank you so much, too. All right. Wow. All right. Liz Carmouche's name will forever be in the UFC history books, win or lose, Saturday night. Absolutely. I know. I was thinking the same exact thing because this is such a historic card in that aspect. You know, think about it this way, Phil. Two years ago, I was talking about women's MMA, and what was I saying? You said you never wanted to see two women fighting unless it was, <laughs> unless it was over you. <laughs> unless it was over me. That's always been it's my because that never happened. No, yeah, yeah. No, no. <laughs> and um, don't, come on. Come, uh, come on. Do you, know, do you forget who you're talking to here? Come some, on. Sometimes. You know, no, I don't you know, think he does. Sometimes yes, I think that's it's Ozzy. You know what, Joe? All right. You <laughs> give, look at the hand. All right? Apparently I'm talking to John Travolta right now. That, that's right. <laughs> that's right. You forgot. That's Sam. right. No, that's Vinny Barbarino, too. All right, guys. Listen, we're going to take a break right now. Uh, when we come back, we should have... Have Yuri Villafort on the phone and uh, a whole bunch of other good stuff. And, of course, talk about this weekend's fight card. Don't go anywhere. MMA Fight Corner on Fox Sports Radio 920. The MMA Fight Corner. I love how people are surprised. This is the Dan Patrick Show. Oh, yeah. Hugh Freeze, Old Miss head coach. Uh, some people looking at Old Miss and saying, how is Old Miss getting these kids? It's not a surprise that SEC school's getting that, but you took to Twitter and fired back. I was a little bit surprised at it, but I like that you did. You're saying, hey, come on out, you know, put your name behind this. Uh, why did you do it in the first place? Well, we're running the program with integrity. And, um, you know, if there's things that are out there that people know about, I want to know. Um, I, I know that our staff is doing it the right way and certainly, uh, not at all saying that uh, I just want to know if they have something, bring it. But if they're going to just make random accusations that, that have no basis, um, you know, you get you get frustrated and tired by that, of course, because it's, uh, it's sort of uh, what our society is evolved to. Oh, yeah. The Dan Patrick Show. Call me. It's the Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings at 6 on Fox Sports Radio 920. Check out Wahoo's Fish Tacos, where you can chow on amazing fresh food and enjoy drink specials on Jameson, Pacifico, and Absolute. And they have gaming and sports betting, too. Plus a chance to win Rebel and Mountain West Championship tickets. Only at Wahoo's, Rainbow and Sunset, or Boca Park. What's up, fight fans? Wondering where to go when the MMA Fight Corner is not airing on Fox Sports Radio or Fox 5 TV? Go to MMAFightCorner.com for all the latest MMA news and gossip and the most exclusive interviews anywhere with your favorite fighters. That's MMAFightCorner.com, your all-access pass to everything MMA. Text the keyword LVH to 69187 for your chance to win. A free two-night stay at the LVH Las Vegas Hotel and Casino and join the mobile club. That's the keyword. LVH with no spaces to the number 69187. To win a two-free night stay. Messaging and data rates may apply. Hi, this is Billy Muir from the MMA Fight Corner Radio Show here on Fox Sports Radio. And I want to tell you about a great gym right here in Vegas that is helping me get into way better shape while teaching me to protect myself like an MMA fighter, even though I have no plans of ever stepping inside the cage. Extreme Couture helps me and plenty of other men, women, and children get into better shape while having a great time in a family atmosphere with coaches leading classes who really care about me. Where else can you go and see world-class athletes like Randy Couture and a host of other UFC fighters training? Nowhere. So whether you're someone who just wants to compete or get in shape learn boxing kickboxing wrestling grappling jujitsu oh and i almost forgot they have great kid classes as well extreme couture is the place for you no matter what skill level you're at trust me i know it helped me get my butt right back into shape call and visit this state-of-the-art facility today call 702-616-1022 that number again is 702-616-1022 you'll be glad you did i know i was When Americans volunteer to serve their country, their country promises to take care of them when they come home. Carlos Leon, this is my local injury unit. Veterans who suffer a paralyzing injury are injured for life. 21 years old, injured May 10, 2005. Health care, transportation, simple day-to-day -day living become major challenges and require enormous assistance. We filed a 21-2680, and has that been processed? Having to deal with a complicated and often confusing process is not easy. I could send you another copy. 
Paralyzed Veterans of America has been fighting for over 60 years to make sure paralyzed veterans get all the benefits they were promised from the country they proudly serve. A spinal cord injury is an injury for life. And at Paralyzed Veterans, we are their partners for life. To help us help America's veterans, visit pva.org. Thank you. Hi, this is Dr. Shahab Mokhtar with Senogenics. Senogenics is an overall medical approach. We're not just a diet. We're not just a supplement company. We're not a hormone company. We're a customized medical program for each individual's needs. I actually have Dan Green, one of our patients here with us. Dan, what's your experience been like with Senogenics? I, I love it. I've been on it for six weeks now, and, and, and I think it's great. You know, Doc, I was a former athlete. I just felt like so tired all the time. I had no energy. I had these long work days. I need something in my life. I need, I need to change this. I want to live. Dan, so after six weeks, what do you think about Cynogenics? I think Cynogenics is absolutely fantastic. I, I go in there, and next thing you know, I, I'm meeting with this doctor, he, doing a bone scan, and then, you know, a nutritionalist, and getting a physical, and I was just overwhelmed with how thorough the examination was. And it, overall, it's just been great. I couldn't thank you enough. Feel and look the best you can this year, and take control of your aging, now with Cynogenics. For more information, go to Cynogenics.com or call 888-YOUNGER. Stop! Stop paying too much interest on your title loan. Go to Fast Cash Title Loans, where they're offering a 9.95% rate. While everyone else is paying up to 24% on their title loans, you can get one from Fast Cash Title Loans for only 9.95%. If you have a title loan somewhere else, Fast Cash will go with you to pay it off and get you a new loan at a lower rate. Come into Fast Cash Title Loans today and pay only 9.95%. Call 685-4100. That's 685-4100. King Mobile Ball, and you're listening to the MMA Fight Corner. The MMA Fight Corner. Welcome back to the MMA Fight Corner. You're here with Billy Mira, Phil Devine, Joey Varner, Heidi Fang, and Armando behind the board. And as I told you at the top of the hour... We had an interview with another UFC fighter fighting this weekend. Yuri Villavort joins us on the line right now. Yuri's going to be taking on, and I hope I'm saying this right, Nashan Burrell at UFC 157, happening this Saturday, February 23rd, on the pay-per-view Facebook card. What's happening, Yuri? How are you, my friend? Oh, man, I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Yuri, i got to ask you how you're doing. You took this fight with under a month preparation. How ready are you to step in at this moment? Oh, man, um, you know, I'm a fighter, you know. I was born to do this, and I got the call, and I got the call that once, you know, everybody wants to get that call, and I was super happy. And then I was I was, I was, was getting ready for another fight, and then I didn't care, you know. I I focused these last two weeks, and, and I was ready to go. Now, you both have fought on uh, the same strike force cards before. How how much familiarity do you have with Nashon Burrell? Actually, you know the the UFC card that that got canceled the, with the Melendez, the whole deal that happened. Yeah, you two were set to for fight. Yeah, we were supposed to fight on that, but that whole thing happened, and and I know him already, you know, because I I, I watched a couple of his videos, and my manager said that I was I was about to fight soon, soon, and then when he gave me the name, I was like, okay, that's good because I kind of know what, what he does, and. We just focus on those things, we, and then we're good. Yeah, so generally he likes to stand and trade, and I, I know you like doing that very well, too, very much too. Uh, is that where you expect this fight to take place? My friend, uh, we fighting is funny because we never know what's gonna happen, you know. But uh, I'm ready, you know. I'm a, I'm a well-rounded and everything. And wherever the fight goes, uh, I'm going to take it. If he gives me uh, an arm or he gives me his chin, I'm good, you know. I'm going I'm going there to take this win and to bring it home. Now, your family has a long lineage uh, uh, in the fight world, uh, from your father to your brother to your, all your brothers, actually. I know they're involved in some way or another. Um, does that add any any extra pressure to you, especially with, you know, with expectations? My friend it doesn't give me any pressure. Just give me my father. You know, he gave me. He when he found out that I was fighting UFC, he got his first plane from Brazil to Miami, and then he came here, and then he was staying with me and helping me so much, giving me so much advice that I bet no no fighter has it. You know, he has more than 200 MMA fights. That's some knowledge that not a lot of people has it, and not a lot of people that can share on the games. 
and I'm very happy and very proud to be part of this amazing family. And it, it's not a pressure. It's just like a big plus on my career. Yeah, and your brother's been on this stage before, so I'm sure, sure he's been there to help, uh, you know, mentally too. Yeah, my brother Danilo, he always helped me, you know. He, he's, uh, I, I wasn't a fighter if, if he wasn't, you know, because he was a judo fighter back in the day, and then he, he got sick with judo, and then he was like, I'm going to start MMA. And he, if he didn't have that, that decision, if he didn't make that decision on that time, I wasn't here fighting UFC today, you know. So I'm very happy for to be part of the Indio Brothers, you know. No, oh, absolutely. Now you you started with American Top Team, and now you're with the Black Zillions. Am, am I correct with that? Yeah, yeah you're right. Well, um, what's the biggest difference? Um, you know, it's hard to tell because everything is different. You know, nothing is the same. But uh, an American Top Team, I feel like uh, they they don't treat the fighters how they should be treated. You know, and on the Black Zillions, I have the authentic sports management. They helped me so much on my career. I couldn't be. I wasn't here without them, and and I feel like I'm blessed, and I feel like uh, I'm I'm representing one of the best teams in the world right now. Yeah, a ASM definitely. You know, every fighter that we've talked to with them has talked about just uh, how welcome they feel and how well treated they are. Um, but you and and your family, your brother, and I know your father. You actually have a history with the guys over at Top Team with Ricardo Laboria and Conan. Is there any ill will towards the fact that you left, or you know, is that just business? Man, you know, um, we had we had some problems back in the day, but. I'm very grateful because we have those problems because if we didn't have those problems, I wasn't here, you know? So people would say, oh, I'm mad, I'm this and that, but no, I'm happy because we had those problems because now I'm on a different level. I train with different fighters, with different kind of coaches, and with, with something that is not those bad things that comes to, to a good thing. Excellent. Yeah. Yuri, between... 2009 and 2010, you fought six times. You stopped five of your opponents. Uh, Bloody Elbow actually had you ranked as the number one up-and-coming welterweight in the world. Then you, you tear your ACL and you tear your meniscus. How hard was it for you to deal with such a devastating injury at, at such a, 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 the beginning, a young part of your career? Yeah, man, I, I actually I started training MMA when I was really young, you know. And then I started training at ATT when I was, I moved to America when I was 16. And then I started training over there. When I turned 18, I turned 18 on March. And then I, I, I turned 18 on March 23rd. And on April, I was already fighting, you know, pro fights. So, and then I did five fights in 10 months, you know. There's not a lot of people who does that, you know. And then I was feeling so good, but... You know, everything happens for a reason. I tore my ACL, and I had long recovery, but now I feel great. And it's hard, you know, when you almost there, and then you have to go back. You know, it's, it's frustrating as a fighter. It's frustrating as an athlete. But, you know, we work with our bodies. If our body is not 100%, our job is not 100%, you know. So we got to stop, think, do what we have to do, get better, get healthy. And then, and then go back to do what we love to do. Well, you know, when you finally made it back to the cage, it was on the biggest stage of your career. It was for Strike Force. You were taking on Quinn Mulhern, and you you lost the fight split decision. Um, do you feel? Well, first of all, did, have you watched the fight? Did you feel you lost? Actually, actually, I'm gonna say something that you guys are gonna see a totally different Yuri because I wasn't. I felt like I wasn't training right for that fight. I was, you know, with some problems. and But it's not an excuse, you know. But it is what it is, you know. It wasn't my first time on a big stage and, you know, the, all those kind of things. But now, man, I'm totally happy and, and focused. And you guys are going to see a completely different Yuri on Saturday night. And it sounds like you learned a lot and you grew from the loss. Was was this one of those situations where the the loss was the best thing that could have happened to you to help you become the best version of Yuri? Yes, man. Who 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 likes to lose? You know, nobody likes to lose, and that gives like, you know, that thing stays stuck on your throat. But you know, 
that's what makes you better. Uh, every fighter that they came from a loss, they came better. It's not. It's not. It, this is something that is a human being. You know, that's nature. And you get more motivated. And when, even when I signed with UFC, I got so happy. It was like, oh my God, you know, I'm living the dream. I'm living the American dream right now. I'm gonna come there. I'm gonna bust. Bust my. I'm gonna train every day here. And I'm gonna. You know, be what I have to be. Be the best. Be the one I can be. You know, I know that I have talent. I know that I that that I have the right people on my side. And and let's do it, man. I'm I'm very motivated and I'm very very um, well prepared for this fight. Now, getting back to this fight, you know, you're taking on Burrell, and, and Phil touched on the fact that he was TKO'd in his last fight, and it was actually in the clinch uh, by, by a barrage of knees, and you spent a lot of time in Thailand. This is one of your strong points. Are you going out there not necessarily looking for that clinch, but just aware of that opportunity and hoping you can utilize your strength in that, that particular field? Man, it's not, it's not only knees. I you know I have some good tricks that I play now that I train, and I hope I'm going to catch with those. And if I catch, you guys are going to see beautiful things coming up, you know? Yeah, yeah. You earlier you were talking about, you know, we're going to see a, a new Yuri Villafort, and, uh, which is very exciting to me because, as Joey mentioned, you know, a few years ago you were touted as the number one welterweight prospect in the world, you know, undefeated at the time. And, and now you're coming in there and you have a new team behind you, the Black Zillions, with guys like... Bur- Barillo Estima as uh, uh, one of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu coaches there, and Tyrone, Tyrone Spung. I mean, you have some real great guys there. W- w- how has that helped advance you? Man, it's so much knowledge. You know, I feel like I have the best seminar that people can't buy it, and I have every day on the gym, like right after training, you know, because you really learn after training. When you talk and then you share some things, you know, and then, be like with guys like Vito Belfort, like Aaron Spong, you know, all those guys that have so much knowledge on the game, so much experience, just like increase my, you know, and they all love me and, and I love all of them, you know. And then we, we, it's great. It's great to be part of that team. It's great to, to be here. And I'm ready to do my best. Being around uh, uh, such superstars like that, you mentioned, you know, Vitor Belfort, for instance. Of these guys, wh- who's had the most influence on you? You know, who's really kind of taken you under their wing and, sh- and showed you the ropes and taught you the most? Man, well, in the Black Hills, we are like a big family, you know. And then we all try to help everybody. But we have we have so much people over there. And like Tyrone, we got Vitor, we got Luis Buscapé, we have... Jay Z, we have George, you know, it's so many names that Eddie Alvarez that comes over there, you know, and all those guys that come like over there. It's, it's great, man. It's great to be part of that family. You know, I, I mentioned that that 2010 scouting report by Bloody Elbow, and they had you ranked as the number one young welterweight prospect in the world. And on that same list, you were above the likes of Eric Silva and Douglas Lima, who are two of the hottest prospects in the sport right now. You've got to feel great that 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 your talent was was recognized, and and you know, I think we're all looking forward to some some big things from you. Man, like, when I, when I got that, I, w- I was. Just a kid, you know. It was like two years ago, and then when I saw that, I was like, "Whoa!" You know, it's pretty shocking. You know, it's, it's like the work that you put on, all the hours you put on in the gym. You know, it's finally pay off. But but that doesn't mean anything, man. The, the, what what means is when you go there and then you prove yourself, and then you give uh, to the public big fight. That's that's what matters. You know, I don't care about the past. The past is the past. Now the future is now, and then you guys are going to see the new era of MMA, you know? I you love that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the new era, in closing, uh, do you have any thoughts on uh, this weekend's up-and-coming fight card? Uh, any thoughts on the, uh, the the headlining bout between Rassi and Carmouche? You know, I'm a, I'm a judo fighter, you know, and uh, <laughs> I got to go with Ronda, you know? But uh, but the other girl, she is really, really tough, and then she's not there. She's not there to to play around. You know, she really wants that belt, and, and she's going for it. You know, her life is is, is depending on that thing. And Ronda got to be really focused. But I really think Ronda is is more prepared. She was a Olympic athlete. You know, that gave a lot of uh, is a big plus. And 
I think she was going to get, like, the 10th arm bar for her career. Yeah, <laughs> the it, it's, pre- arm bar. it's pretty funny because we actually just had Liz on the show a little before you called, and we were talking about the fact that not even – not only is it, you know, her and Ronda headlining the first women's MMA fight or in the UFC, um, you know, you have Dan Henderson, Leota Machida, guys like Uriah Faber, Koscheck from the Ultimate Fight. That's got to be, a, you know, you re- really must be looking forward to that. Not only did you get added to the UFC, but you get to come in on a very historic card. Man, it's, 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 that's what I'm saying. I'm living a dream, you know. It's a real the American dream right now, and and uh, I just gotta put there, and all the hours that I put in the gym, I'm gonna go there and, and, and do my thing, you know, do my job. And I love Lioto. I, I was with him. I trained with him uh, on the last year in Brazil. I, I was with him. I trained. I, I I met his dad. You know, I went. I trained a little karate with him, and I'll be fighting the same day as him. You know, it's fantastic. You know, it's, it's something that no money can pay. You know, it's, it's it's like like experience. You know, it's something that you live and and you're never gonna forget. And I'm gonna tell my sons and my grandsons that one day I was in a, <laughs> one of the biggest cars ever. You know. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's good, right. Good for you, Yuri. Yeah. I'm happy for you. Absolutely. Well, listen, we wish you all the best coming up when you fight this weekend. Uh, going up against Nashon Burrell. Go in there and do your thing, man. Make history. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for the space, and, and I really appreciate it. And on Saturday night, you guys are going to see a, a great show. Stay live on Facebook, because my fight will be the first one, and, and you guys are going to see a great show. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Yuri. Be well, man. Thanks for joining us. Wow. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be it's a good, good fight card this Saturday. It, no, it's a real good. Dude, I, I'm stoked about this fight card. I mean, I, don't want, I know we have Friday to talk about this and really break this card down. I can't help but look at this car and just be like, look at this. And, and you know what else is cool about this car, by the way? This, isn't this Mike Kies's first fight? Yeah, it's, yeah since the Ultimate Fighter. Since yeah. the Ultimate Didn't Fighter? He, he was hurt, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah he, he had injured. to pull out of another fight. But, you know, we were talking to Yuri, and, and I had mentioned, and I was telling Joey this beforehand, and we were talking about it. I thought it was so interesting, this whole thing with, for, first off, let's talk about the Black Zillions. All right. Aside from Abel, the Black Zillions this year... Well, and that towards the end of this year, the, it, it's got to be a tough atmosphere around there right now. They're no, no one's no one's picking up the wins. They are on a losing streak. They are on a losing streak. I was going to mention that. You know, man. and I, I didn't want to bring it up because I'm listening to this guy, and Yuri seems so happy, so positive right now, and I didn't want to go there with the negativity the week of his fight. But you know, thank you. There by is, the way. yeah, there is a lot of pressure on this guy. You know, we talk about his brother Danilo, who was in the UFC, in the IFL, the WEC. He's been a veteran for years. Uh, he's got another brother who's a, a Taekwondo instructor, and his dad. His dad is Francesco uh, da Silva, who is known as um, Master Indio. Remember he said on the air, uh, Indio Brothers. Okay, he's excited to be part of the Indio Brothers. This guy's had over 200 Val Tude fights. You know, it's just, like, that's raw, dude. That's raw. Like, he stopped fighting in 1975. With 200 fights. Now, I, I don't know if he's like Hicks and Gracie or or who was the one that had like 400. Was it Hicks in that at 400 fights? 400 no. <laughs> 400 no. <laughs> but, I mean, that's a, that, that's just coming from a fighting lineage. You know, his uh, Didillo, his brother, his godfather is Noguera. Wow. Big Nog. All right? And I was telling you earlier with the American top team thing and he, bringing up the whole, you know, yeah, they had some issues. Yuri's father presented Ricardo Laboria with his red and black belt. Ricardo Laboria, the head of American the Top Team. The head of American Top Team. So, you know, to, to see that there's some animosity and he looks at it as a good thing, it got him out of there. Because Tiago Silva said the same thing a couple months ago when he left American Top Team. He's like, that was the, wa- the biggest waste of three years I've ever, ever. It was the worst time I've ever spent. And he said the same thing. They didn't treat fighters the, the right way. You know what sucks about that, though? Top team has been winning. T- top team is no joke. <laughs> no, right? And I it's mean, one of the best facilities, you know. But I, I think it's really funny that, you know, everyone feels at the Black Zillions that they're being treated so great. Everything is fine and dandy, but they're not winning. Apparently, a top team, you get your, your face bashed in, but you win your fights. Right. You know, so sometimes, and I'm pretty sure in the sport of uh, fighting, you know, tough love is needed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, it's just true. That's true. Now, also, I want to remind everybody that the Ultimate Fighter is on tonight. What are we up to? Our fourth episode? This is the episode fourth four. Episode, episode yeah. four, the Ultimate Fighter. I can't wait to get home. Nine o'clock, watch the fight. Any thoughts, real quick, before uh, we go on to another subject here? Um, just so everyone knows, I know during the promo that they've been showing, um, it's Bub- Bubba's fighting tonight. Bubba, Bubba McDaniel versus uh, Kelvin Kelvin Gastelum. Ke- Kelvin is the youngest guy ever yeah, in, in the tough, history of tough. In the history of tough, he's the bail bondsman from Arizona uh, from Yuma. Okay, uh, in the promo, everybody uh, that you see Bubba raised standing with his hands raised. Okay, but the guy that he's fighting is wearing different color shorts in the promo than the guy he's fighting tonight. So they're throwing one at you, like. But said, I thought th- I thought that that clip of him in the promo was from the fight to get in the house. It was. It yeah. was. A lot of people didn't realize that, you uh, know, everyone because everyone thinks that oh, they know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen this year. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to watch it tonight. Yeah, I'm okay. juiced. I, I, I this this season period, like I'm I'm always excited, looking forward to Tuesday Tuesday nights because the, the the new and improved, looking great, star studded cast. The Ultimate Fighter is awesome. Not since season one. I mean, I, I loved season four. Because it was, you know, fighters you knew on the comeback. You wanted to see those guys again. But season one was the, the pinnacle for the Ultimate Fighter. Absolutely. It, it, was the t- it, it, it kind of progr- you know, went down a little bit every year. All right. But this year, right back at it. So excited. <laughs> so exci- <laughs> well, dude, everybody well, here's, here's the thing. Is, I mean, we, we've made the conclusion we think it's Uriah Hall that is this beast that sends everyone to the hospital. We don't know if it is. Yeah, we do. We we don't know if because it is. in the quote Dana said there's this there's this beast on the show blah 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 he sends everyone to the hospital he he has one of the sickest not vicious knockouts I've ever seen in the history of tough there may be more I hear there's quite a few knockouts this season so what do we suggest watch, watch tonight it. tune in tune, tune in, in don't tonight miss it. nine don't o'clock miss it. now uh, in closing before we get to the hit list is there anything you guys want to add to the UFC on Fuel TV seven card any other surprises I got just real quick. I got to talk about Andy Ogle and how surprised I was in that fight. I thought he, I, I he, you know, for me, he surprised me. No, shoot, he surprised me too. I don't know what surprised me more: Ogle's determination in heart, or or Grisby just quitting. I'm not quitting, but just kind of or breaking. Because what, what, came... what about me breaking? <laughs> what about hey, me breaking? But, I hey. came in here on Friday, and all <laughs> I'm saying is I don't trust Dras Grisby as far as I could throw him. Ogle's got the heart, and then you talked me out of it quicker than a hiccup. I was like, yes, sir, Joey. Hey, you, I'll tell you. You oh, got that right, boy. I'll tell you what, though. I'll tell you what, though. drinking the wine, Phil. I'll tell you what. When that. The first two and a half, three minutes of that fight, you were thinking to yourself, man, I'm glad I changed my pick. Yeah. And then at the end, I wasn't. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> now, real quick, also, our boy here in Vegas, uh, Useless Gomez, man, what do you think the USC is going to do with him? It's a shame. You know, I, I think, uh, I don't think anything yet. Uh, it's just, it was a tough fight to call. Um, some people... Wait, wait, time out real quick. You thought he got robbed, Armando? Now, do you think now? Now, everyone know this is this is well known on the show that Armando, no matter what, is going is of Mexican descent. If you couldn't tell by the name Armando, yes, and plus he will, I'm already upset at all of you guys that you still haven't talked about our boy Danny Castillo. He will. Armando will always, no matter what. Yes. Pick a Mexican, and if the Mexican just got knocked out, he'll say, "No, he won. He he won that fight." Like Armando, he knocked <laughs> no, out. No, 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 no. He won. He, you know, yeah, he woke yeah. up before the time was up, and, yeah, he, and yeah. he won the decision. Yeah. So you really thought? I mean, like, you really, my boy, I, but look, I, I thought I he think, lost. I thought the, he the, won both round one and two. Clearly, he lost round three. Uh, I thought. You know what? I can't really question that because I thought the round could have. I thought two could have went either way. I was, you know. Leaning with Harris because of not because I, I thought he won it because of where it was yes. and because of the ju- you know just it's in England I understand you, what you're you fight that. a backyard boy yes. um, but the thing that let me down the most was was I, I thought Ulysses like I thought he was going to tap this guy in no time Ulysses was such a better striker and he came out and tried to engage with in a kickboxing match that was pretty even like he was pretty he tried one or two shots he didn't only really push him his corner was telling him hey. Go shoot, but don't really try to finish it. Just get him thinking about it. Land strikes. I thought that's the worst advice. You're the you're light years ahead of this kid in the grappling department. Why you're pretty even with him in the striking? Why are you fighting this kind of fight? Okay, I want to know where when he's going to unleash the guy, the champion for Tachi Palace. Is that he, did he? Those fights that people don't usually see those fights. But the, he, he won that belt back in November, right? But how did he win those fights? Yeah, I mean, he was with uh, his grappling. With his grappling. grappling. I mean, he was, he was Mark Lane and Black Belt. But right? I'm like, when is he going? When is that guy going to show up at the UFC? Now well, uh, he showed up in the UFC. And he's, he, he's trying to be a striker. 
Something's, something's wrong there. Which is, you know, <laughs> hey, look, this is like, okay. He this trained is like Gale, right? This is like, yeah. I believe so. This is like uh, Damian Maya. Damian Maya bursts on the scene in the UFC. He's tapping everyone out. And then suddenly he starts thinking he's a striker. And he's all he's doing is striking, striking. And he's kind of getting pieced up. And then he learns the art that most complements his art. And that's the wrestling. And now this new Damian Maya, who's a wrestling hybrid jiu-jitsu beast, is, is dominating great wrestlers. And I think, I think when you're learning new martial arts, you have to learn a martial art that complements your existing skill base. So for a wrestler, you'd want to probably learn some boxing or some striking. For a jiu-jitsu guy, you want to learn wrestling because that's where you want the fight to take place. Yeah, and you know what? One final thought on the, the, this past weekend. Um, I know it's a few Maybe a few fights down the road, but I would love to see Damian Maya face Gunnar Nelson. Oh, I think Damian would beat him. I'm not I, impressed I, I, with a few, a few fights down the road, not yet. A few fights down the road. I want to see. I want to see Damian Maya Nick Diaz. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, Joey said that's it interesting. He's first. Nick's got some business to take care of first. <laughs> Oh, I mean, after he loses that one, I want, okay. oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I got you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's going to happen. It's going to be a good fight. All right, guys. Now it's time for the show. It's the, it is that time, I should say, for Heidi's hit list. Okay, guys, injuries at UFC 158 coming down the pipe. Obviously, I'm sure you've heard by now that Rory McDonald injured his neck and he was out of his fight against Carlos Condit, but they did some shuffling. Uh, Johnny Hendricks was supposed to face Jake Ellenberger. And Hendricks has now been moved in to fight Condit. And now Nate Marquardt, ex-Strike Force welterweight champ, will face Jake Ellenberger on March 16th in Montreal. Oh, my God. You believe- and I think we have uh, Johnny on the show this Friday. We do. We do, so we'll talk about that. Dude, nobody gets injured more than Jason Bateman. <laughs> also injured on that card. Patrick Bateman, I'm Patrick sorry. Bateman. Yeah. Yeah. Like, American Psycho, I got American Psycho. <laughs> Uh, Mitch Gannon was also injured and is forced off the UFC 158 card. He was supposed to face Issei Tamura, who is now going to fight TJ Dillashaw, alpha male, back in the house. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Also, uh, via Twitter, it is a rumor, just a rumor right now, that Pat Berry has a fight scheduled against Sean Jordan. They've agreed to about in May with the UFC, obviously, at an event to be announced. It has not been formally, uh, I guess, confirmed by the UFC as of right now. Also, uh, in case you missed it, in the post-fight presser at UFC 156, this I'm sorry, UFC on Fuel 7, Dana White is taking a stand on everybody that is using TRT who he believes may be abusing it. I saw that. Wow, and interesting. Rory McDonald pulls out at next mm. day. Just mm. so- oh, what's going well, on I should here? not accuse anybody of anything Yeah, don't like say that. that. You can't He's really say that. He's just a man that. beast. Uh, no, he is. He's a boy He's beast, a great, actually. Great. He's a little kid. Well... We want to thank all of our guests. We want to thank Yuri Villafort for joining us, Liz Carmooch. And uh, we want to remind you, watch The Ultimate Fighter tonight. And we also want to thank you, the fight fan, for joining us as always. Join us back here this Friday, 5 p.m. inside the MMA Fight Corner for all your exclusive interviews, breaking news. Visit MMAFightCorner.com. And we'll see you soon. MMA Fight Corner, Fox Sports Radio, 920.